Good morning, all. It's my privilege and pleasure to introduce Kennedy Solano to you today. Kennedy has come over 10,000 miles through 10 time zones and spent more than 24 hours on a plane or planes to be here today. And it makes me think God must have something really important he wants Kennedy to say today. Amen. And for us, God has brought Kennedy all this way to be here today. So he may have, he may have something important for us to hear today. God bless you, Kennedy. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jack, for that good introduction. I was just reflecting and saying if God would visit Lincoln, and in this case I mean Jesus, he would first visit Jack's house for his kindness. And uh, I want to thank God for, for the last three days that has, I've been, he's been hosting me together with the pastor and uh, your dear wife and the entire Likonon leadership and the church. Good God bless you. I feel so much humbled to stand before you, coming all the way from Kenya to come and just share what the Lord is doing in Kenya. My name is Kennedy Salano. Um, I'm part and parcel of uh, this church family because you're supporting me in what God is doing through our ministry down there in Kenya. Would you just kindly clap for yourself? <laughs> and just before I share briefly what the Lord is doing, allow me to pray together with you. Heavenly Father, we honor you. We thank you. We celebrate your goodness and mercies, which are new each and every morning. And we thank you for such a gift of today that you've given us that we may not only hear from you, but utilize it for your glory. We thank you for this uh, uh, church that uh, you have uh, purposely put in this place that they may fulfill your will, and that's what they are doing. I speak your blessings upon them, upon their families. I pray for those, Lord, who are struggling in different areas, even as pastor has prayed. I pray, God, that you may stretch forth your hand. Touch them. And because you are Jehovah Rapha, a Lord God who healeth us, we want to believe that, God, you are touching them. And above everything, may your grace be sufficient in all circumstances. And as now... We are gathered here to hear from you, and we pray the Holy Spirit, may you whisper your purpose in our hearts, penetrate into our minds and into our spirits, and may you deposit that which God would want us to capture and take action upon. And we thank you and we bless you for this we pray, believing and trusting in the name that is above all other names. And the church said, Amen. 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 Uh, in Africa, we make a lot of noise. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, uh, you would bear with me because it's only today. And could be when I come, it might be after many years to come. So today, tell your neighbor, we are going to make a bit of noise today. <laughs> Amen. Good. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I want to say that I'm here under the invitation of the leadership of this church because, as I said, you guys, you're supporting our ministry down there in Kenya. And I just came purposely to connect with you and to just say also thank you so much for what you're doing uh, in our family, in our church. And above everything, the ministry that God is helping us to do through compassion and uh, specifically sports ministry. And uh, we, we've stretched our scope of uh, outreach to other places beyond the, uh, Kenya. So as you can see, that is me and my wife, Emily, celebrating 23 years of marriage. I got scared when I saw somebody, a uh, couple, celebrating 65 years. I have a long <laughs> Uh, we have a long way to go, but the grace of God is sufficient. Amen. Yeah, yeah so last year we celebrate our 23rd years of marriage. Uh, the Lord has and, uh, this far blessed us with children, but we have hundreds of children that we are ministering to. Amen. And uh, I'm the lead pastor of our local Assemblies of God Church, and I've been serving for the last 23 years. Uh, in that area called Karyobangi in Nairobi, Kenya. It's a slum area that has a population of over 70 to 100,000 people. And then uh, I was a fanatic of soccer when I, grew, when I was growing up as a young person. And uh, when I got saved, the Lord directed me to redirect that passion and energy to the Great Commission, and uh, out of that, we developed uh, this uh, sports ministry called 316 Transformational Sports Ministry, that God loved the world, that God loved even those who are down there playing soccer, and he sent his son so that they might have eternal life. So that is our ethos. That is the foundation of what we are doing. And uh, that's our local church. Uh, it's a family of 100 to 200, mostly young people. And uh, our, uh, even in Kenya itself, uh, 60 to 70 percent are people who are under, uh, are young people or youths and children. And also we have a school when God called me after three years, he had me walk around that community. And one of the days as I was walking, he spoke to me about those children who are not going to school. And I also was challenged by one person who called me and told me, Kennedy, what do you do beyond uh, just pre preaching on, in the, on the pulpit or on Sunday? And it really provoked me to pray and uh, God just uh, 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 brought the idea of us starting a school. We started uh, with 34 children, but now they are 220 kids. <laughs> Amen. And it's always, it touches my heart when I go there and I see those children singing, memorizing verses, and just glorifying God. And it also reminds me the impact that my grandmother and mother did. Uh, God bless their soul wherever they are, but they really planted the seed of godliness in me. And as I stand here, I am a product of a grandmother and a mother who loved Jesus and who wanted their children and their grandchildren to love Jesus also. And so I'm running with that vision, with that dream, touching children through sports and, uh, and also through a holistic ministry in terms of a school in our church setting. It's amazing that even in that school, we have Muslims coming to that school and they get to memorize the verses, they get to sing Christian songs, and we release them to where they are living so that they can go and uh, make a difference wherever they are coming from in their communities. 
Uh, that's a picture of our children. Uh, we've started a program called uh, Feeding Them, uh, not only food, but also the Word of God. We've changed it to Sunday, whereby they come, they hear the Word of God, and after hearing the Word of God, we are able to give them a porridge and also a toast of bread. And they're so much excited about it, and we thank God because they are great missionaries and evangelists because they would call their friends and their siblings to come to church because they are taking porridge and bread and we give them the word of God. So this far we have 130 kids every Sunday coming to our church. Say hallelujah. <laughs> and that's a picture of what we also offer. We give them greens, we give them uh, corn bread. And that's a picture of our sports ministry. You can see me there. Uh, Paul talks about becoming, uh, uh, to the Jews, I became like a Jew, and to the Gentiles, I became like a Gentile. So to reach out to them, to connect to them, I must stoop down to their level. And that's why you can see that picture whereby I normally connect with the children and to the youths. And through that, God has done an incredible and a phenomenal thing of changing and transforming their lives. We also go beyond where we are, uh, whereby we train coaches in different countries. So this far we've I've gone to more than 15 countries just training pastors, leaders, and coaches, and we can attest of God's impacting many nations through what we are doing. You can be uh, amazed that what you're giving to our ministry is what is making this difference. Amen. So good God bless you. And uh, another way that we are using is using of this, what we call a higher power ball. I was introduced to this ball many years ago, but one of our, your former members, Roger Oswald, he's my mentor, he's my coach, and one of the, in one of the con conferences, I just was walking by, and I met Roger Oswald, and I was captivated by what he was doing in terms of a higher power ball. So he took me through the course, and I was able to capture this concept of reaching out to the children using this higher power ball that is very much evangelistic in nature. The black represents sins in our lives. The red represents the blood of Jesus which cleanses us. The white part represents that the blood of Jesus cleanses us and we become as white as what? as snow and then the green part after you have gotten saved as a child as a boy and a girl we encourage them to join church so that they can grow and pray every day so green is growth and then the blue one represent our sense of identity in christ jesus that we are no more uh, sinners but we are saints we are children of god as uh, john chapter 1 12 says those who believed him, he gave them the power to become members of Lincoln Church. <laughs> Children of God, amen? amen? Yeah, just allow me to talk to you as boys and girls. That's how I do. <laughs> and then finally, the yellow one represents our destiny, where we are heading to. Where are we heading to, boys and girls? Heaven. So each and a moment you kick this ball in that playing ground, remember Jesus died for you. Jesus loves you. You need to call on him in prayer every day. And finally one day we will join him in heaven and live with him forever and ever. And the church said? Amen. Amen. So that's how we do it. And we thank God uh, also through the provision of this church. We have a machine that produces those balls, and uh, as uh, we will be winding up, uh, I covet your prayers. We have a projection of reaching out to a thousand churches with uh, using a thousand coaches or with a thousand balls, which will reach out to twenty thousand youths and kids, and it can only cost you. Ten dollars for us to buy or to manufacture a ball. 
So you can miss out on that McDonald and give to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. I'm a pastor and I cannot miss out on giving. <laughs> Amen. And so we also reach out to the unreached people groups. These are list of unreached people groups. And we use also tracks. We use all means to reach out to the lost. And uh, sometimes when I go to that part of Kenya, South Sudan border, uh, I get time to do a tournament and connect to the community. And I know Brother Jack showed you uh, a, a clip of whereby we were racing with an old man. But this time when I went a few months ago, he beat me and I was number two. Uh, I think because of my weight. <laughs> Last year I won. This time, uh, anyway. And then we pray also, which is very, very important for the young people. And one uh, incredible thing is, is to see lives of young people being changed. Anthony is one of them. Many years ago, we invited him to church. He wasn't saved. But we knew that Anthony is a very talented footballer. So we told him you'll be part and parcel of our team. And each and every time he played, he was our best scorer and our best player. Eventually, uh, he gave his life to Jesus. He is totally transformed. He is leading the teenagers. Yesterday they had a teenager uh, Sunday. He was the one and his wife doing everything and he's uh, doing uh, amazing things uh, by serving God. He prays that he joins Bible school and becomes a pastor. And when you pray, pray for Anthony, that God will open doors for him to go to Bible school so that we may continue multiplying ourselves. Amen. So that's our vision of making those higher power balls. A hundred, a thousand of them, coaches a thousand, thousand churches, 20,000 kids. And we can only do that in what we can call partnership between Kenya and Lincoln Church. Good God bless you for listening. Amen. Allow us to go to the word of God in the book of Philomen. In Kenya, we call it Philomen. I want to share briefly the word of God. Philomen is in the New Testament. Just after first, uh, Second Timothy, you'll find this... Uh, one powerful missiological book written by Paul. And I want to highlight the aspect of missions. And uh, I'll put the topic as lessons, from, lessons on missions from the book of Philomen. The Bible is a missions book. And above everything, God is a mission God. And the desire and the purpose and the will of God is for us as a church and as believers to be mission-minded. And I'm thankful to God that this great church in this community is a mission church. Amen. And each and every time a church engages fully in the mission of God, it attracts the presence of God. It attracts the power of God. It attracts God in totality. I want to pray that we will continue with that attitude of formations. I want to pray that God will help you to accelerate and uh, escalate your efforts in missions. This small 25 verses book is a missions book. As you read it, it has a lot to give in terms of the heart of God concerning mission. Coming from Paul the Apostle. It has a lot of lessons to learn about conflict resolutions as a person. It has a lot 
for us to learn on matters on how to develop healthy relationships with one another. It's a book on forgiveness of God. Amen? Amen. And it is a very rich book. I encourage you to continue reading it. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, read the book of Philomen. Philomen. Just talk to your neighbor on my behalf. Tell them, read the book of Philomen. In Africa, we talk to our neighbors. Just tell your neighbor, read the book of Philomen. Talk to your neighbor, pastor. <laughs> so Paul begins by saying, and this brings me to my first point, that we need to know that we have to know the purpose of God and serve it faithfully. Paul begins by saying in verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. Paul basically knew that he was a prisoner of Christ. And he is, could be writing it from a literal perspective and also from a spiritual angle point of view. That when he is in that prison in Rome, he remembers that he was arrested because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was arrested because he was preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so when he's writing to Philemon, he has a sense of identity that he, uh, he is a prisoner of Christ. And typically we know each and every prisoner when they are in a prison, they know why they were arrested. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, do you know why you were arrested by Jesus? Come on, friends, talk to your neighbor. I will bother you a bit. Just tell you, ask your neighbor, do you know why you were arrested? Amen? Paul knew why Jesus arrested him. He arrested him to be a missionary. He arrested him to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And he is doing it joyfully, cheerfully, knowing that he is fulfilling the purpose of God in his life. He is doing it obediently. And that's why the prison is not a limitation for him to serve in missions. He knows he is a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will open our eyes to continue knowing our purpose in serving him in this community and even beyond. That regardless of the circumstances that are surround us, we will be focused on the big picture of the Great Commission. Amen. That our joy would be indirectly and directly sharing the love of Christ to the nations. Amen. And that is what the Likolon Church and the Church of Christ should propagate and emphasize. We are prisoners of Jesus. I'm coming here as a prisoner from Kenya. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Arrested many years ago and given the mandate to propagate this great news in that slum and beyond. And God narrows it down and he tells me, now you will use that football that you are crazy about during your days as a young person. And in obedience, because every prisoner is supposed to be obedient to their master. Every slave. You say yes, you can discuss later. Yes. You say yes, you can argue tomorrow. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a good prisoner.
We must know our purpose and serve that purpose faithfully. Paul knew he was a prisoner of Christ. Another very important component concerning mission that comes out of the heart and the mind of Paul is that Paul believed in working with others. The element and the component of teamwork, team spirit, and unity was a driving force in the heart of Paul. In missions, you cannot do it alone because Jesus, being the Son of God, he knew that he could not make it alone, and that's why he appointed the twelve. Amen. Amen. And may I suggest to us that one is very little for you to make a success. I'm saying one is a too small number to win effectively when it comes to missions. And I want to thank God that the Holy Spirit has inspired the leadership of this church and the membership of this church to know that with unity, God will command a blessing. Amen? Amen. And I want to encourage you to continue being unity-driven in terms of missions. I'm standing here coming from the assemblies of God. And I was just uh, saying in my heart, when it comes to heaven, calling names, the assemblies of God will be the first one because they start with A. <laughs> I don't know where L will be, Pastor, but you'll be somewhere. <laughs> but that notwithstanding, we are one family of God. Amen. 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 With one common purpose of winning souls to Christ. Men and women, children and adults, youths. We unite our efforts, we unite our resources, we unite our creativity. And we share Jesus to them. And Paul is capturing from Jesus our Lord. And he's mentioning people here. When he's writing this letter to Philemon, he's telling Philemon, I'm not alone even in this prison. I am an apostle. I am a great thinker. I am a theologian. I am a church planter. But as much as I can do all those, I need Timothy. I need Aphibia. He's mentioning them. I need our keepers. And he calls our keepers my fellow worker. In missions, we need one another. Tell your neighbor, we need one another. Talk to them. Just tell your neighbor, we need one another. Yeah. Yeah. Team spirit is of essence. And thank you for teaming up with people in different nations like Kenya to propagate this good news. That where you cannot go physically, you are teaming up with somebody who can reach out to that locality. That is the team spirit that Paul is bringing out, even as he addresses a, a, a misunderstanding, a situation that he feels needs to be addressed for the gospel to continue in that city of Colossia, where Philemon is. And so he's mentioning part and parcel of his team. Paul really loved teamwork. You go read Romans chapter 16. He's mentioning all the people that were around him and who did him good. And some of them would harm him. But he capitalized on those people who had a positive attitude of fulfilling the Great Commission. May God help us to capture the spirit of teamwork. Thirdly, we need to know in fulfilling the Great Commission, the grace of God is paramount. In the third verse of this book, Paul greets people. And it was uh, uh, typical for people who are writing letters those days to start with introduction and then mention some of the people who are close to them. But this is inspired writing. This is revelation coming direct from God to Paul to the church. 
with a picture of us connecting to that as the body of Christ so that we may emulate that, that it's all about the grace of God. Amen. Amen. In terms of even serving and reaching out, things happening, Paul realized it was about the grace of God that was working through him. And he loved the terminology of grace because he was a recipient of God's grace. When you are a recipient of God's grace, you give grace. Hallelujah. You give the peace of God. And in missions, let's look at people with gracious eyes. When we look at them with gracious eyes, God will release his anointing upon our lives to speak to them and have them change to the better. And so he says, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That was not normal greeting. That was not ordinary greeting. It was a message that was rich with heavenly revelation that God wanted not only Paul and Philemon and Onesimus to hear, but also the church in Lycolon and Kenya to hear. That we serve by grace. We are saved by grace. And we need to preach the grace of God to the people that we are ministering to. Amen. Missions without grace, it is null and void. You are an ambassador of God's grace. Again, tell your neighbor, you are an ambassador of God's grace. Amen. So we need to know our purpose. And we need to work together as a team. And we also need to know that we are carrying the grace of God to the world. And finally, in missions, we need to know the gospel has the power to transform lives. Amen. That is the turning point. That is where the rubber meets the road. That's where, that is like the, 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 what Paul was now wanting to tell Philemon. Hallelujah. I don't know whether it's a dessert or whatever, but this is what he had packaged to Philemon, and he's just telling uh, Philemon, and I'm paraphrasing it, I'm in prison, I am a prisoner, I send you the grace of God and the peace of God, but now let me tell you the story here. Uh, a young man has been brought to me, I don't know how he came to me, but I am always gospel conscious. When I look at people, I look at them with a gracious hand and I. And when Onesimus came to me, <laughs> the first thing I wanted to know, are you born again? Not that, have you eaten something? Ah, he shared, testified, witnessed to them. And that's what we are doing and that's what the church is all about. Allowing the grace of God to operate into their lives. Into the point that Onesimus will be transformed and changed from being a useless person to a useful one. You've got a lot of use here. He says, I, he says that in verse 11 as I wind up, formerly he was useless to you. Can we read together? This is, uh, this is very juicy here. Verse 11. Can we read together in the spirit? One, two, start loudly. Formerly, he was useless to you. But now he has become useful both to you and to me. Can we read it together if you're there? Kindly. One, two, start. Verse 11. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful to you and to me. Powerful. The gospel in missions has the power to change and to transform lives. 
That is what Paul is underscoring here. The way Onesimus talks, how he does things, it has totally changed. He's no longer that runaway slave who had a negative testimony of what he did to fellow men. But with the time after he had accepted the gospel, he totally changed. And that's what the gospel does. And that's give us the confidence even to pray and to go and to give because we know the gospel has the power to change lives. Amen. Somewhere I read the same person said, I am not ashamed of the gospel Amen. because it's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. It changes somebody from a sinner to a saint. From being hopeless to having hope in Christ. And we are a product of that. Amen. Amen. We are recipients of God's grace that has totally changed us. And we are new people. The old has gone, the new has come. And that is the message of missions. That we need to propagate, we need to pray about, and we need to encourage people to continue moving with it wherever they are. And that's what we are doing in Kenya, telling people that we are prisoners of Christ. We are recipients of grace, and we are offering that same grace. That God has the power to change people from being useless to useful. I don't know. You might ha be having a picture of uh, somebody in your mind whom you can humanly say, surely these people, we don't know. But I want you to know, friends, if God has not given up on them, don't give up on them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep praying for them. Keep telling them about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep demonstrating the love of Jesus and the grace of God upon them. And one day, you'll have a testimony that surely... They've made a transition from being useless to useful. Good God bless you. And shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We honor you. You've called us with a purpose. We are obedient prisoners of Christ, prisoners of your righteousness. We are recipients of your grace. And we thank you for that. We pray that God, collectively and individually, we shall continue propagating this gospel because we believe that this gospel has the power to change and transform lives. I speak your blessing upon your people that God will continue rekindling the fire of missionaries in their hearts. That this church will be a, a beacon of hope to this community and even beyond in many ways. We thank you for the men of this church. You know them by their names. You've anointed them at such a time as this. I pray, I pray that they will be the Paul of today, reconciling the Philomen and the Onesimus of today to Christ. We thank you for the great women of this church who have given themselves to serve you at such a time as this. May you bless them, energize them, heal them, those who are sick in their bodies, Remember them, Lord, as they call on you. And may you cover them with your blood, Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Amen.